Hey, <laughs> welcome to the Phalanx. I'm Jason Farrow. I'm going to introduce my guests or columnists, or I guess you could, I don't know, our regulars, I guess, tonight. But hey, thanks for coming. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different because I'm working off a tablet today. So uh, my laptop decided to update. So, you know, today was, clearly tonight was the night. But anyway, so enough of my mug. I'll introduce uh, my. Uh, esteemed colleagues so let's see right off the bat we're gonna have uh dennis valencia hey dennis what's up hey guys how are you dennis valencia yeah. dr valencia designs good to see you guys yeah thanks for coming dennis appreciate it absolutely all right next we're gonna get uh jack sloan jack is coming from the future and uh there he is. Hey, Jack. Hey boys, how, are we? how are we doing? What's up? What's up, man? Uh, not much, boys. Thanks for visiting us from the future. We always appreciate that. Thanks and, for having uh, me. Always good to travel yeah, back course. to the past. <laughs> yeah. Come back and see how this shit show it was. <laughs> yeah, that's it. There. All right. Uh, next, we got uh, Jerry Shadowin. If I pronounced it right this time, Jerry. Yes, you did, man. Yeah. You know, first What's up, buddy? My What's last up, man? <laughs> I tried because now I had a lot of pressure because I did it last time and I was like, oh, man, I hope I don't mess it up. <laughs> and uh, yeah. now next, uh, introduce our another future dweller, Nate Broughton. And, uh, Nate and Jack are both from Slate Comics. So let's see. It's Nate. A... What's <laughs> up? We'll drop the good day. And hey. Glad to have you, man. Thanks for coming. And last but not least, my my ride or die, my co-host with the most that I couldn't do any of this without. And uh, <laughs> here he comes, Chris Michael from Homebrew Comics. Hey! Oh, man. Mine is like overbearing. Jeez. A.K. I was dying at that one, man. A.K.A. <laughs> Winchester. 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 <laughs> God, this guy is like killing me. I might have to turn this yeah, thing I off. saw that before when we were in backstage. I was just like, I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to turn this thing off. This is this is rough. Give me one second. I'm gonna fix this. Uh, right off the bat, I'm gonna apologize for my audio if you hear any scratching because I'm running even old school earbuds because you know I didn't hook my Bluetooth up to this tablet that I'm running. So you know, it's just like just like every other time. <laughs> it's, it's always some There's bullshit. Always something with me, wrong. So. Yeah, right. Literally, always something, and it's, I'm always the root cause of it. So. <laughs> There we go. That's better. Hey, Chris, just uh, when you want to share something, just give me, uh, just let me know. So, because okay. I, I have to pull up differently here on the uh, tablet. I can't even see the comments from here, honestly. But so. I got two uh, screens going. I got the comments. Oh, okay. I see you. Yep. All right. All right. I got you. Yeah. So, uh, really, thanks for joining us. Uh, this is what, episode nine, right? Yep. It's pretty intense. Yeah. I, and, uh, so, you know, now, now being from, you know, the Florida school systems where I grew up and, and, you know, so I, I know 10 comes after nine. I learned that. And, uh, so, so that's good. The next episode would be 10. That's a, that's a pretty cool milestone. I think. Are we going to do something uh, special for episode 10? I, I think we should. I think we could do something. I mean, we always do something, you know, I think yeah. it's a, I think it's a milestone. I think it should be celebrated for sure. You know what I'm going to say, though? I think this episode nine is going to be better than the last episode nine that I watched with Star Wars, and it was garbage. So, <laughs> for that. Here, I start this off right. Let's talk some trash about something that I hate. That Star Wars episode. Yeah, eight yeah I mean, well, you would yep. have to. I mean, it just wouldn't be, uh, especially at the day we booked. Especially at the day you had and, and the day I ended up towards the end with. So we got a little oh, riled man. up. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, today was a day, guys. Yeah. Although I did have a, a really good um, chat just a little while ago with um, I'll get let me let me swap over there. Forgot the catch catch craze catch the craze. That's what I was just on before this. Um, mm -hmm. Cool guys, they have an Indiegogo going as well, and they just reached out to me about uh, promoting my Indiegogo and talking about crit. And it was really cool. cool. So um, I'm going to shout them out. Catch the craze. They're on yeah, Indiegogo right of now. Course. Their, their book. 
uh, cool guys. They've got a podcast that they do, and um, I think their website's catchthecraze.com. Catch the DA craze. So awesome. check them out. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know you're doing that. That's cool. Yeah, I would definitely check it out myself. That's for sure. Uh, so this is like an entire like we're we're our own little group outside of this, and uh, <laughs> this is kind of cool that we're all on it, all of us at yep. the same time. So that's pretty awesome. So I think it's yeah. awesome that most of us actually work on the books together. I mean, we a do. lot of us yeah, had, we're, we're, uh, a lot of us have contributed to Hunter's Moon and the upcoming and well anticipated Hellwolf book. Um, oh yeah, that book. Yeah, that's, and then we yeah. got. <laughs> I think Somebody every, in this chat is pressing me for the script. I'm not going to say who. I don't know. I was like, can I just get the <laughs> yeah. goddamn Hunter's Moon out? <laughs> it's all yours, buddy. <laughs> so is Hunter's Moon like done, done? Like, no. Uh, no. Well, <laughs> actually, uh, from this date today, the colors are 100% finished. They uh, wrapped up last night. And um, sorry, my dog. I got my dog here. So if you see me reaching back, he's you know, my wife's home. He can, he's all losing his mind. But um, yeah, hundred uh, percent. And the letters, uh, from uh, my understanding, will be finished the by week's end. This week, yeah. So yeah, don't, don't put and that then, uh, right now. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, so I'm we're you know, to it, and it'll be, um, it'll be finished this week. Well, the, nice. the best thing about that is, too, is that, you know, we're in constant communication. So it's not like some other, you know, you you hired somebody out and you don't talk to them other outside the project. So, you know, there's it's, our lettering process is going much quicker than I believe some others le- lettering processes might go uh, because of just, you know, Chris and I are always talking about it, you know, about it, about things, about everything. So, but yeah, so the end of the week and then once we get it, like, you know, we'll do a couple read throughs on it. You know, just, you know, make sure all the grammar is good, which it is because, you know, I'm a meticulous jerk and Chris is a meticulous jerk. So you got two meticulous jerks on it. And uh, by doing that, you're, you're catch- we're catching all kinds of stuff ahead of time. And uh, I put the, I put our poor colors, Cristiano. <laughs> <laughs> I put that poor guy through hell. I don't know if he'll ever want to color another book of mine again, but uh you know, every every you know every time he's like, hey, you know, he sent me a page. Is the page done? How's it look? I'm like, yeah, it looks good. And then like, I'll go back and look at it later again, and I'll just you know whatever. And then I'm like, hey, Chris, you're gonna kill me, but uh, I, I need you to kind of touch this part up. Okay, you know, he's he's such a great guy. He's such a professional, and uh, yeah, he's uh, he took it he took it like a champ. He really did because I was a real <laughs> I was a pain in the ass. I know I was, and uh, but you know, I mean, the, you know. It, 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 you know, we're blessed to have him. He really <laughs> stepped in and uh, did a fantastic job. And, you know, and I'm happy to have Chris as well. So, yeah, we're going to do read throughs on that. And, man, boom, it, she should be uh, ready to go to print. I mean, uh, nice. fingers crossed. I can't see any uh, any other speed bumps. You know, pretty happy about it. Pretty relieved to get it out to all, all you know, all, all everyone here that, that backed it and everyone that, you know, everyone that may have backed it that's watching. We're uh, we're actually you know really happy to get it out to you. So it's uh, I, I feel personally that uh, I delivered the best book I could. So I think it's coming in uh, thirty six pages. That's with covers, of course. Thirty six pages. So for six dollars, if you backed it for six bucks, you were literally getting a lot for your uh, You're getting almost your two books worth of material. You really are, and uh, so I mean, a lot of, most of the folks in here have seen some of the pages and stuff, and. Uh, you know, here and there. And so they know that it's, we're really putting, we really put our, all of our effort into it. So I think we delivered and hopefully you will too. All right. Enough about me. <laughs> yeah, you talk a lot. It's fine. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. You I, we got yeah. your name on the, so, on the channel, right? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> but, uh, so today's topic, uh, I think we, uh, what, what were we going to talk about, Chris? I thought we were talking about Crayola crayons. Wasn't that our topic for discussion today? <laughs> and here we I go. Are. Uh, <laughs> test I I'll just go ahead with that one. Um, no, we were talking about uh, our characters <laughs> and having flaws and the idea of not having the most overpowered individual you can just to yeah. say your character can beat up somebody else's character. 
Yep. And we, and unfortunately, I think, I think all of us have come across individuals like that in the community. Community is vast. All right. There's a lot of different creators, a lot of different uh, processes and thought and, you know, creativity approaches and just, you know, different influences as creators. And yeah, we've, uh, it's, I, I think, and this is just purely advice. I think that's kind of why we wanted to talk about this is that I'm, we're just going to put it out there. Plain and simple, if your uh, if your character is so OP that you know he doesn't have any flaws or he doesn't have any uh, you know any any I mean any human or whether he's a human or not any human like relatable uh, relatable traits that us as a reader can grasp onto, you know I don't. I don't really see that going any place. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, even Superman, like I say this all the time, Superman is like, well, I mean, let's be pre-crisis. Superman was the most OP Superman there was. That dude could like move planets and stuff. But, uh, you know, but still Superman, him, even the current, you know, the current version of him, he is still well, a pretty I OP character. Like 90% of the characters in publication, com- like your, your top two books, or your top two publishers, they're all yeah. they have Squirrel Girl well, who's like the most powerful <laughs> in the universe. You have I Iceman know. who you know he, he he now controls at a molecular level. Wolverine has you know defeated death. Um, and he's Cyclops. got like fire claws and shit, so there's that. So. Yeah, yeah. Fire claws. yeah, they they mix Cyclops and Colossus and what five people with the Phoenix Force. I mean, come yeah. on, like. I think they're just running out of stuff to do and, and they're just throwing you know stuff at a wall until it, it sticks. Although I will say this about the Phoenix Force squad thing, costumes were freaking sick. I'll give them I that. was just going to say, like some of them, the Captain America one, I really, really, I gravitate towards. I thought that was really awesome. And uh, I, mean, I, yeah, it's, I think they're just sitting there drawing one day and they're like, oh, this would be cool. And then we're stuck with an entire story arc based off of an oh, idea sure. that was cool. Yeah. But yeah, I'm Absolutely. tired of hearing like Superman Gold, Superman Ultra. I mean, he might as well be Goku at this point. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, they had Sorry, to, I mean, all the, all those Dragon Ball Z fans out there. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but even Superman himself is though. Even without all that stuff, he still re- they still try to you know because raises Clark Kent. They still try to give him relatable issues you know what i mean just from him dating lois you know and i and, you know like there was a lot of things that you could kind of say okay i know he can like literally throw a truck across the country i get that but the guy also has a shit ton of flaws you know really? that uh, is often exploited by enemies you know people uh, forget superman's biggest struggle is not being human and living in a human world Right, you know, right. He has to remember that when shaking someone's hand, he has to always control his, yeah, like his own power. So, so imagine being the strongest person in the room and always having to hold back, you know. And when, yeah, I think what's cool is when we see him fight. I think Dennis like, knows that feeling. You know, and when we see him fight someone who's super like like Dark <laughs> Fate or something like that, he yeah. uh, he can unleash all of his power, and that's that's when we see the true Superman. But I think that's his struggle because he loves a human, you know? So right. there's a struggle there, I, you know, trying to give someone a hug and, and kind of like in your world, patting them on the back, but in their world, it feels like a crush. Integrating that person. <laughs> with the right. hug. Well, that's, I think you and I talked about this not too long ago. Like I said, one of my favorite episodes of the justice league cartoon was when he was battling dark side and he was like, I told him that. Yeah. And he was like, uh, he didn't have to hold back. And I was like, and he even said, he's like, you have no idea. It was like going through my life, not trying to hurt somebody, break somebody. And he, and man, Hard. just watching that, that was a, that I got, I still, even when I watch it, I still got goosebumps. Cause he freaking, man, he leveled dark side. Mm. Yes. <laughs> that was one of my favorite episodes, man. Living in a world of cardboard. That's just, yes. That's, that's exactly what he said. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yeah, that was a great episode. So it makes you wonder. So everybody that he has fought before with super strength, he was still holding back. Yeah, exactly. And I was just watching a clip with him earlier today when it was a whole bunch of um, doomsday guys coming from um, the dark side planet. And they were fighting Superman, Wonder Woman, uh, 
you know, Wonder Woman's, uh, you know, squad, her, her heroines, whatever you call them. Uh, yeah, right. And Batman. And I guess after a while, Batman, Superman started noticing that a lot of the Atlanteans were dying, like Wonder Woman's girl, girls were dying. He was just like, yo, Wonder Woman, pull them back. I got this. And he flew up. And he yeah. used some atomic eye laser and just disintegrated the entire yep. dark, you know, um, doomsday army. And it was like, how powerful is this dude? Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. Like, I don't, I don't even think he knows. Yeah, you know, right. and I think the way right. you know, and but again, he's a severely over. He's severely powerful, but I, he's written well usually. Usually, and I think that's what it comes down to. Too, you can have a character that's like massively powerful, but you know, I mean, I don't know though. Century on Marvel, like, mm, <laughs> I mean, no one beats that guy. Like, <laughs> well, you forget where the creation, the creation of that team, that Century and and all those guys came from, was to mock those, and then right. they became popular. You know, him. Yeah, and, exactly. I for, I forget that team. Um, they, on, that's one of them. Yeah, Hyperion and all those guys. Like, they literally. Well, I think actually, I was reading something. I think that the creator had wanted to do a Justice League crossover, and this was you know decades ago when that wasn't even a thought. Now right. I think they're actually they could they could probably pull it off easier now than back then, and because they couldn't get it to work, he just created almost like a ripoff of the Justice League. But I, I do kind of like some of the, the struggles he gave those characters because um, I've read some of those old books back when it was Marvel Max, you know, okay. when yeah. they had a bunch of nudity and cuss words and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> now, Disney would never allow that. But. Well, I don't know. They claim they're allowing it with, you know, Deadpool, we'll say. Well, you they have, have to. Deadpool. You can't have Deadpool well, I... and not have Ryan Reynolds off the cuff the entire time. They would have lost. Right. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. Do you guys remember um, that? Uh, I think it was actually an android in the um, uh, Justice League series. I think he was like called Amazo. But <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Amazo is a badass. He's a bad. He's a badass villain. He's like one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, like he was like just super powerful. Like Superman, nobody was able to like stop him. I think it was like Lex Luthor. That like had to make friends with him to stop him from like destroying right. the universe and stuff, you know. And it's like now that's just OD powerful, as powerful as Superman is. Right, you could just be able to rip yeah, because he could replicate. Because mm -hmm. he could replicate. Uh, yeah, because we could replicate stuff. Well, okay. And now that we've discussed the you know a, a very OP character, we're all <laughs> creators here, right? And uh, and I think we all have we all have our own characters, including Dennis, who's finally revealed uh, a couple of his that he's been holding on to. Now, I think we're all you know we're all out there. So let's, as a writer, because Dennis, I mean, yeah, we're, we'll talk about Celestial Knight, right? Okay, let's talk yeah. about him. Yeah. Uh, from I I don't know a lot about, him, but I do know he obtained these abilities via. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, well, you tell me. <laughs> so, what makes well, him, you know, what makes him powerful, but also yeah. relatable? So, I think one of the things when I was forming the character was I wanted him to be flawed. But the biggest thing to me was, in, uh, what is your motivation? Because I think every character that is successful has a great motivation, whether it's Peter Parker, right. Batman. But these are relatable motivations. Um, it's hard to pick. Like, is money motivation? For me, it's not. Um, a lot of the character, and, and it's kind of interesting because when I think about you guys, because I always back, go back to you guys, is what motivated your characters. But not only that, my character is motivated by my motivations. So I would love to, you know, get into your arts where your characters came from. Did your own motivation shape that character? And I'm sure in some little way they did. But my character right. was almost uncomfortable. My character is a lot of my emotions and how I think and a lot of things that would motivate me. Like, if I had these crazy powers, what would get me off my ass to go fight some, you know, 30-foot monster and risk my life for people who don't give a rat's ass about me? Like, that's what I really want to delve into. Um, and I think one of the cool things about the topic we're talking about, one thing is about being overpowered, but being overpowered with a sense of relatability. Like, Superman, like, 
brought up was fantastic. He's overpowered, but he has issues that we can all relate to. And if written correctly, you can really have a great story. So for my guy, I mean, he looks, I know he looks badass. Like I've been working with him forever. I love the metal. Mm-hmm. I love the way he looks. There's so many powers I haven't introduced yet that I've, I've talked about with Slate guys that when I reveal them, I think they're just going to kick ass. But I, I mentioned it to these guys before. I'm telling you right now, he's a guy just like any of us. If we had gotten crazy superpowers, do we not mm-hmm. fight? Like, I think there's a big difference with Jason. Yeah, you know how to fight. I know that much. I'm a wrestler. I used to wrestle. I know that much. Chris too. There's a, yeah, there you go. And you guys know, yeah. like, styles make fights. So styles make fights. Jerry knows martial you know. arts. He's capoeira. <laughs> I've seen – well, I've seen him with a lightsaber, <laughs> so I'll take it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, <laughs> and he's got and, – and let's be honest. Jack and Nate, they're from Australia. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be they tough. Everything wants to kill yeah. you in that damn country. Yeah. <laughs> so. I'm, I'm, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the big thing. Like, I have a guy, right. my character, who who gets these powers, and as the series goes on, and as my three issues, what I'm hoping to do my three issue arc, is him learning to deal with those powers. He may look badass, but hey, he's just like me. If I had been given these ridiculous powers, I know to wrestle, but that's about it. I might want to take a punch. If I was to go up against EJ, I'd get my ass beat to the ground. And I don't care how many strong powers I have. You know, I talked to Nate about it, being like. My guy probably just ass kicked by the convictor because the convictor knows how to fight. My guys might have bigger powers. He's just learning to use them. And I, I think one of the best things is, you know, when you have something like Super, uh, Spider-Man, he has all these powers in the beginning, and you kind of see those are his powers. I love it when characters have powers and they develop them and start to learn them as they grow, as they get older and as they get through more experience. Um, nope. But that's where I was going with him. Like, I really want to start him out fresh mm-hmm. as any of you, you or me, get a, so, you know, a huge set of powers. And what do you do with it? And what motivates me to get off the rest of my life for, you know, like a, a society that I don't have, you know, partially agree with? Um, I think it's a really interesting, you know, dynamic. And that's what I would really want to explore. Ooh. Yeah, that's, a, that's actually lot. really good. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and right, well, for you guys, like, I really look at you guys. Um, where are you going? Like when you guys, like Jason, you've had your guys for what, 35 years? Like what more? Uh, you oh, 37 now. After now I just counted. 37. Yeah. So what motivates your guy to go risk yeah. his life on the line? You know, and that's the things I really find the most interesting. Like I look at Chris guys and I read his books, you know, right. what is he behind it? It's not just the game and he's writing from a script from the game, but I, these characters, his friends, you know, his boys, like there's a certain motivation when it comes to risking in our lives. And I think it's when you would come just so used to it, like, oh, there's a bad guy. They just go jumping into it, you know, full force. I'm sorry. I don't care how many powers I have. If you think I'm going to jump into full force and my family's behind me, I'm just going to be like, yeah, let me go risk my life. I, I think it's a really interesting topic. And for me, I really want to explore that in my series. That's actually that's, that's something that char- every character struggles struggles with is the why. Okay. So yeah. in Crit, now, now I had to give my guys a reason to go out and do stuff. And in Dungeons and Dragons, the reason that people do things is for money. You take adventures, you do the adventure, you kill the monster, you get the gold, or you get the girl, or whatever the situation is that you're getting uh, from from that. So I made crit in, in you know if you read issue one, they're at work, you know they're doing this for a paycheck. Realistically, mm-hmm. these guys even you know these guys are literally going to work now. Their job is to protect the city, so that way Technetic can make money off of what they're doing and sell merchandise and do those things. Um, I think. You know, and this goes back to something my, my wife and my daughter talk about when we're watching a Disney movie, for instance. The hero is always, you know, motivated by the death of someone in their family. So almost every major character, look at, I mean, look at Batman. It's the Batman thing. His parents yeah. died. He was a hero. Okay. You know, Wait, uh, Spider-Man. Batman's parents died? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a storyline. That know. was literally spoilers. They weren't just on their house multiple <laughs> times, apparently. <laughs> yeah, they die in every movie. Yeah, I can see Pearl. <laughs> Pearl thing the floor. That's all I can see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think so to sick of it. Though, I respect, and I'm not saying this just because of the Batman thing back there. I respect the Batman mythos because that. That was done before it was old. You know, even Spider-Man and the Uncle Ben situation was done before it got old. Now it's like, mm-hmm. hey, I'm a creator. Um, what do I do? 
oh, um, their, their friend died or their mom died or their sister died or their whole family is wiped out. And I think, I think to a degree, though, killing off the, their background and what ties them to reality, you know, I mean, your family, your family dies tomorrow, t taking away everything, it sometimes can be a cop out, depending on what you're doing with your character. Like Jason's character is a different story. Um, and like Punisher is a different story because it ties into their their military background or that that kind of thing. It shows the danger that they're in. But if you're just Joe Schmo, like me right now, a guy breaks into my house. I'm not gonna put on a convictor suit and run around and kill everybody. I'm well, gonna that's your first that's your that's your first mistake. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna be depressed and buy ice cream and play video games until I might drive Here's, my The car. secret Whatever. is never taking the suit off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I think that if you're going down the road of creating a character and creating struggle, you you do have more options than than the Batman or the Superman. You know, like how many times is it I'm a hero out of time or a hero out of my own place? Like I like I like some of the new things I'm seeing with the characters. Like I really love your idea, Dennis, of having a guy and his struggle is fitting into being a superhero. You know, yeah, like that's actually pretty powers, awesome. Like that's that's kind of unique. Um mm -hmm. you don't yep. you don't see that a lot. I think that no, pushing the right. needle is what we need to do. Yeah, and I think that's part of it. Like, I know we most of us don't read the, like the current DC and Marvel, and there's a reason because we got sick of reading the same shit, and that's why we started making our yeah. own books. Um, and for me, it's always been that, and I, I always go back to like, you know, I work ridiculous hours. I got kids, you know, I draw like three hours a night, like while my kids and wife are sleeping. Man, motivate me to go fight some, you know, bad guys and leave all that behind and risk it all. Um, for me, every time I read a book, I'm like, are you serious? Like, there's, there's got to be some more to it. Like, there's got to be an right. end to it, even a Batman or a Spider-Man, where you have that closure, where why do you keep going on? And I know for me, it's going to start from the beginning. Just like you guys, you're starting from the beginning, and, like, you're telling that tale, um, and hopefully it'll continue where you can see that growth. Um, but, yeah, I mean, when I, every time I read you guys' books, I'm looking for that. I'm like, Jason, I can't wait to read yours and get to know your character. More. What motivates him to just wreck shop? Um, and every that's the thing like i'm looking for that every time i uh, i pick right. up a book like what's the motivation behind it and when it comes to being overpowered and being relatable i want to be that like again how relatable are you to to us like we're the readers we you know we're we've been reading this for forever and are you guys gonna jump into battle and risk everything just for you know for what you know i i'm also curious so we got um you know we got two other books coming out soon. Uh, I'm I'm in the process of reading Colt script. I'm so sorry, Jack. If you talk to me on a daily basis, like like Jason, you'd know I'm like beating my head against the wall half the day. But you know, Omen. I've read Omen, um, so I know your story. I think that you've got something unique there, I, and uh, I like to involve some of our Australia friends because you guys tend to be a little more quiet than the rest of us. So. Talk to us about well, because you're background killing and... animal, killing shit all day. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really, I really want to hear like about Omen and Colt a little bit because those are books that are coming out later this year. I know you guys are working hard on the story, a Jack especially. I've, I've literally like felt your struggle in your words sometimes, and like the passion you're putting into that is amazing. So I really want to hear and like kind of talk about the backgrounds that you're working with the characters and what sets your guys apart from everybody else. Go on, Jackie Boy, you're above me on the picture, so you can go first. Always, man. <laughs> above you in every aspect in life, mate, and you know that. <laughs> um, yeah. Right, well, the going back to the, um, you know, the strength of the characters and all that sort of thing, um, I, I intentionally created a character that is very human in a lot in a lot of ways. Um, so he's, he's pretty much based off of the... Um, you know, my, my point of view, like um, when it comes to to simplify it, you know, just just take a murderer for instance. I have a I have a philosophy of um, if you take a life, you should have your life taken. You know, that's very controversial, I guess. You know, but um, Colt has that um, mentality, and he's um, he's very he's very sick of um, you know like murderers and all that getting away with it, you know, corruption and all that sort of thing. So that kind of plays back into the whole Batman thing, wanting to clean up. Um, clean up criminals and all that sort of thing. 
but he also has that um, that monster hunter element as well. Now he's he's very arrogant. Um, you, you'll see in the first book he'll he'll go out after a murderer that's been killing for a while, killed a fair few people. He's very dangerous, and he goes out in a pair of combat pants, combat boots, and a bloody shirt. You know, no no body armor, no nothing. So um, he, he, um, so yeah, when it comes to to him, I wanted to make him very arrogant, very very base. Because with the character, I've had him for a long time now. Um, I'm thinking of his story. And he's um, he's one of those characters, he's like Jamie Lannister in a way. Like, you know, you didn't like him at the start, but in the end, you know, you kind of, you see a real character change with him. You seem to understand and, you know, you kind of grow with the character. And that's 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 basically what I wanted to do with Colt. The incest part of that? Are you adding that in? Uh, yeah, no, not that part. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh shit. Um, yeah, I walked into that one, but um, yeah, it's it's more about the story. I, I find that um, you know, the characters that have a lot more to lose, the characters that could die at any moment, um, I think they're the they're the better stories. So that that's what I intentionally ran with with Colt. I didn't want this overpowered guy where you knew at the end of every issue he was just going to move on to the next monster or the next the yeah. next bad guy. Like, I want you to, like, be on the edge of your seat. Every time he goes into battle, he might not walk yeah. out of it. You know, like, you know, the character could be killed off. And, uh, you know, when a character dies in my universe, they don't come back sort of thing. So, um, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's where it comes from for me. I love that. I think... Um I'm going to call it out. Christiano's in the, in the chat room, our, our amazing caller. So oh, yeah. yo, buddy. So, <laughs> I love the fact that we're creating characters that can die. You know, I really think that sometimes, like you said, having the, the overpowered character, you're just wondering who he's going to take out next. You don't see that stroke. You don't see that, the, that pain point, you know? Um, I'm getting feedback off the list, but I'll continue. Um, so, like, it's the I call it the Goku syndrome. I'm sorry, Jerry. Uh, but it's like every season, the, the heroes are waiting for Goku. Goku's going to come back, and what's Goku going to do? He's going to yell and scream for five, five, set, five episodes, and then he's finally going to do the Kamehameha. And then maybe next episode, his hair is going to be a different color. He's going to, you know, like. <laughs> I know we touch base on this a lot, but I think it's a very prevalent um, like story that people can understand. It might be cool. We might have grown up with it, but how many times can Goku just beat the gods? Yeah, yeah. You know, yes, we see them get beat up, but they always come back. You know, no, ha knowing your character can die, I think is is pretty rough, and that kind of puts the 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 reader on edge when they're going into battle. You know, when you see that blood, you see them getting beat. I, I mean, I personally remember reading the the issue where Wolverine got his adamantium ripped out. And I was like, oh, my God. You know, like, he's kind of human now. He doesn't have that metal in his bones. They were worrying about, his, you know, his feral instincts kicking in. We can not talk about that storyline because that was really freaking weird. But <laughs> there there was always that struggle. Um, you know, I in going into major comic books that are like that, you look at um, the Age of Apocalypse, where everything goes wrong. That's like my favorite favorite you know story arc was because it had the idea of th these characters could have died in this war, and you had characters that did die. Um, those are the that's the kind of thing that draws me into a book is is that constant like is he going to make it? You know, so I'm I'm excited for Colt. I promise I will get it read when I can breathe. <laughs> Take your time, uh, mate. It's all good. It's all good. Um, but I, we have to comment here. A character so powerful, his eyebrows are heavy. I always thought of Wolverine just fall fall on you. <laughs> uh, Wolverine for being made of metal would kind of be heavy walking around. Although I don't really know how much you know adamantium weighs. But um, let's hear about the other slate character. So we got we got two of them down. Um, Celestial Knight, which I'm. I am really excited for it. I gotta, I gotta call you out. That freaking design is absolutely sick. Um, yeah, I'm kind of jealous that I didn't create it myself. Cause like, where did you get the motivation for that design? Like, just off the top of your head, or did you find something that was like, I want something like this, and then you kind of built off of that? Uh, 
Dennis. Sorry, who was four? That was for Dennis. Come on. Oh. No, you know what? I, I One of the things, I guess, when I started creating him, and just like, just like you guys, I mean, he's 20 years old. Um, I love drawing metal. Like, uh, I don't know if you guys read Iron Man by Bob Layton. But that was my first artist that I would copy his metal. And then I started, you know, when you start seeing Alex Ross do, metal and do his Iron Man, um, I love drawing metal. I would draw metal. Okay. I love drawing big muscles on, you know, metallic muscles. I always love Colossus. Uh, one of my yep. favorites to draw. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was just, uh, and I think it's going to surprise a lot of people. Like, he might look tough and sick and badass, but he's going to be you. Like, I, I really want it to be like, he's not Green Lantern. He's not Silver Server. His name may be referred to as a Celestial Knight. But hey, he's not flying around the universe. He's you. He's the guy next door. He's the guy who just lost his job. But goddamn, he can, you know, once he figures it out, I mean, he'll be a powerhouse. Um, back to your question, yeah. I mean, 20 years in my head, constantly drawing him just because he looked badass. I mean, when you're an artist, that's all you want to do is draw, draw badass characters. And I just love drawing metal. So any chance I get to draw metal or this big muscles in metal, like, that's my thing, man. <laughs> okay. Nothing yeah, too scientific, I, yeah. The, the design, so it, it reminds me of this D&D &D game that, that actually Obi was the DM of this and he made me become a superhero. And I said, I wanted a whole like magical suit of armor. And he gave me just the helmet to begin with. And the helmet like talked to me or whatever, but it looked like that style of helmet. When I saw it, I was like, man, I wish I, I just, I, I just love the design. Like, it, it's just awesome. I love the gold color. Um, everything. Yeah, like, oh, badass. yeah. When you dropped that, I was just like, Oh shit. Like that's just, <laughs> that's just badass. Um, well, that's yeah, too, like even, even plotting it out like the three issue arc in my head, you know, and you know, again, I'm so, you know, we train visually, like there's so many, like the, or the arc almost goes from splash page to splash page and like getting there panel to panel is the fun part. And I just know that that payoff is going to be, um, for me, it's going to be ridiculous. So just like, I can't wait to like surprise you with this or surprise you with that way or turn a page and go, God damn, that's a kick-ass scene. You know what I mean? Like that's the fun shit. Speaking of cool character designs, um, Omen, another awesome design character. Let's uh, let's hear about how your character, your flaws, and you know what makes him unique. All right. Well, he's been uh, I've seen I've had him in the back of my mind for years. Like Dennis is drawing random cool characters, but I've always gravitated towards the the pagan, the Wiccan, the sacred witch trials kind of genre of things. Considering I'm a pagan myself, so kind of close to heart there, but. Um, his backstory, one could say, is his, um, he started when he first had his magic. Is a, it goes into his origin book, which I don't want to speak too much on, but he's been indoctrined into the Ascended Order because he's related to one of their members, or more than one, actually. Um, but he's been trained how to use his magic in more of a combat sense and indoctrined into being a killer, a hunter. That's the only use they had for him, to hunt down magical creatures, good, evil, humans, witches, wizards, anything like that. And there's a point with a book I hopefully we get coming out next year where he realizes what they've been doing to him himself. So the book well that I want coming out, Revenant, starts touching on his um his guilt and kind of a PTSD of what he's done for these people. He's trying to make amends. Um he's yeah, he can throw magic spells, everything like that, but he's he's cocky and he's not he's quick to anger, so he's very easily to as you, well, people have read the book so far. The fight doesn't end up the best for him. Um, take a few issues for him to actually come to terms with his magic a bit better and start actually being able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with bigger threats. But in essence, he's just a cocky cocky guy going through PTSD, trying to fight, make amends with everything that he's done wrong. Uh, again, not too OP. Like, you fire enough bullets at this guy, you're going to eventually hit him. His magic will wear off. Or go against someone like Caliber. For example, this is going to be a breakdown. Yeah, I, I, you know, out of the characters that we have, I do love the creation of Cal Caliber because I feel like when Brad came to the table with, I want to be immune to superpowers, that's my superpower. You know, it to me, it was like a broken thing. They, he literally had to reference like anime because, you know, in My Hero Academia, they have um, uh, a racer head where he has to like concentrate on something. 
like I don't know if you've seen the the, the anime or read the manga, but Eraserhead was a big inspiration. And then um, the the I think I forget what they're called, but in Warhammer 40k, there's a, a group of um, warriors that are immune to the psych psyker ability, and he wanted to have something like that to where. The only thing about him was he's a human. He's just immune to everybody else's superpowers. So he, the only upper hand he has is that he brings you down to his level. And so to fight him, you have to know how to fight. I think that that it was really cool, the battle we had. I thought that played out really well. Yeah. Considering oh. they have yeah, they have like similar backgrounds, you know, like Omen has a military background, caliber. So it really boiled down to just honestly, like, I mean, the votes on that one, but I think in the in a real fight, it would be evenly matched because, you know, they're just, they're not going to use guns on each other. I mean, and that, because neither one of them are, are super villains. They're not out there to kill each other. I thought that was just really cool. Um, in the, in the picture you did was amazing. Um, by the way, we, we just really need to make oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a thing. Yeah. Calvary. Is it, more angry? Is it called a omen? You what? Who has more of a shorter fuse, cult or omen? You see, people from created characters here. They say omen's got a pretty short fuse. Omen? Yeah. Well, yeah. I read the cult script. I read omen script and the cult script. Uh, and uh, and back to saying before we were talking about Jack and Colt, uh, Jack's story is very emotionally driven. Um, like when I was reading it, I kind of got invested in how angry Colt was, <laughs> you know, about about the world around him and how he was feeling that it wasn't being handled the way it should be handled. You know what I mean? And his frustration grew from panel to panel, from page to page. And, and me as a reader, and I'm just reading a cold script, you know what I mean? It's not visual at all, but I'm picturing it in my head. I'm really getting a sense that this guy is literally <clears> – <throat> had enough of the way this is being handled. You know, I don't want to give too much away, but, and his frustration grew from his interactions with, you know, his friends and his allies to, you know, to ultimately how he approached the situation at the end. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, you know, the Omen script too, I got the same sense. Omen is, was very, for me, when I read it, he was very much a, uh, he was very like I felt Colt was running more emotional with his feelings, you know. And but the Omen Omen is he had an agenda, like not and, and like he was drip. He had and he was another guy that was fed up with the system. He was fed up with how he was indoctrinated into this and you know and all this stuff. And he was like when I read that, I felt that this is a character who is you know emotional as well, you know, but driven by something more like, uh, I don't, for lack of a better word, like retaliation. Like he knows the status quo by OA, or, or if, I, if I said it wrong, I'm sorry. Uh, he The status quo is not, a, and then he recognizes it for what they were. So there's, there's a, I, I felt when I read that, that there was a lot of, um, uh, a lot. His motivations were different than Colt's. And I think that's what you want from two flagship characters in a universe mm -hmm. uh to you know when you when i look at slate it's cold and it's open you know what i mean two guys that you know intersect but they're two completely different personalities and that's just from reading black and white scripts i got that you know as just you know a, you know just somebody enjoying to read uh so i just want to put that out there because i know we talked about Colt, and i meant to say something about it before jack but i actually did read it and uh obviously you know you and i talked about it but um yeah no, nah, it's solid. It's solid. You guys are really your your writing is driving home the characters' individual uh, personality traits and individual motivations, and then that's important. That is super important. They just don't show up and be like, "Wow, I'm the most powerful guy in the world in my universe. I can wreck shit. Let me go wreck shit." You know what I mean? Like motivation, be damned. You know, or uh, so I think that's pretty. I think it's pretty cool. And you know, of course, with crit. You know, we know, you know, I mean, I, we all know the way the motivation lies with those characters and they're all easily relatable. Uh, each, each one, each one has a different personality and that, and that is super important as a writer. That is like, 
you got to give your characters personality and, because you want you know readers just like Dennis said, you know, you're tired of reading the same shit over and over. <laughs> you know, you want something different, <laughs> and <laughs> indie is different. So, yeah, I, sorry, I, I just had to get that. I'm gonna get that out there. <laughs> changes too. So I, I focus on growing my my universe more than I do my characters. I kind of let my characters grow on their own because the organic storytelling allows me to do that. But for, for me as a writer. I approach it as how does the world react to superheroes? Um, because I think that's something that a lot of people forget is that this they, these don't exist in our world now. So how does everyone else relate to them when 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 that happens? You know, like like what do we do? What does our what does our world do? Because you know we found out this year that aliens exist and no one cared. So yeah, because, like, yep, like that came out. No one cares. <laughs> so we're not alone, and the government's like saying it, and it, it we glazed over that. So are we so numb to to things that finding out there's a guy that can shoot pink fireballs from his hand, and there's a glowing cat running around? Like, do we just not care? Because no, that not guy a show? like was that that guy will end up on Oprah. We all know it. <laughs> right like, like well eventually you know that that's where where their motivations lie is you know like i said in the beginning the first season of my books it's where we're going to work we're doing these things but then we find out there's more going on than than just us because when crit get, gets their superpowers this is the first time they've heard of it this is the first thing they've ever seen so they think they're alone in the world and they're just going to go out and go to work and make money. And right. again, you know, I've got a 20 year old, I've got guys that have been, you know, police officers, they've kind of just got their own lives. They're going to live their lives now. Well, now they find out there's a bigger agenda going on. How do they handle that? And they did it in their own way, which we'll, we'll see, you know, through the pages, but I, I, every different season of mine changes their, their goals and their ambitions. And what, I, me as a creator, when I create these situations to make them choose their goals, I look at my own life. I look at what I've gone through. You know, I posted something this morning on my my creator page, and I was talking about how at one point in my life, my goal was just to be a musician. I remember being 17 years old, looking at my first contract and going, man, this is how I'm going to retire. You know, 30 years from now, I'm going to be Axl Rose. Hopefully not, because he's really gone downhill. But you know, <laughs> I, I really good, wanted dude. to be my first concert. He, he's so, like Keith Richards, so he got that going for it. Dude, I, I will go to my Lake. grave loving Guns yeah. Roses. They were my first, you know, the first band I ever freaking loved. I love their music, and I just wanted to be a rock star. You know, so I remember looking at that contract and going, "I'm good." You're I'm rock fine. star to us, Chris. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but as we, as we move forward in life, you know, I, I was on tour, literally, like I was on a US tour when I quit and I changed my motivation. I want to go to school and do things. And then that changed. And I think we as individuals, you know, if I had superpowers, my goal would not always be to save the world because you know what? I'm sorry, but half the world doesn't deserve to be saved, in my opinion. So, exactly. what does that make me? Does that make me a super villain? You know? And I'm not talking bad about people, but come on. Like, no, I, I don't always have with watching the X Men movie First Class. I was like, yo, if I was in this movie with ability, I'm going with Magneto. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm no sure. shit, right? I'm Give going me Avalon. Magneto. For real. <laughs> Give me an asteroid where I don't have to deal with humanity's BS. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I think Boy, most man. of us feel that way. Like, like, you know, when they're selling tickets for Mars, I mean, those things are selling out. People want to leave, you know? So <laughs> give me superpowers. Am I going to, you know, I respect Superman. I respect Captain America and these all right, all good characters. But that's just not me, you know? And and then, but, but what's to say my motivation doesn't change? What's to say that, yep. you know, I gain superpowers and I have this attitude like, uh, whatever like Spider-Man, and then someone close to me dies, and I realize, hey, maybe it is my responsibility. We don't know. And so I like the idea that my motivations can change. And I'm going to flip this real quick, because we mentioned Cyclops earlier, 
And as much as I hate Cyclops, <laughs> I really do love what they've Everyone done. Everyone hates Cyclops. <laughs> but he, I got in an argument with a guy in Florida, the Disney, uh, the Islands of Adventure. I told him he sucked and no one liked him. That's why no one took pictures with him. X Man. He's, yeah. he's going from a good boy that would do no bad for, for Professor X, you know, like his, his right hand man, to having literally like Reason. affairs. On his wife yeah. with a clone of his wife, and then a clone of a clone yeah. of his wife. You know, yeah. and, then, and, and then there's Emma Frost, but who can blame him? I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to blame him. Yeah. That's, that's fine. That's, that's a pass. <laughs> he really kills Professor X, you know, like, and creates a, a team of, of um, you know, a team just to go out and hunt and kill people. Like, we don't have a, a character. And and you can't compare Magneto, who just decides to be a good guy whenever he wants to be. Yeah, like, he flip flops a lot. Yeah, this like, I, I got my really. I got my like, white suit on. I'm a good guy. Yeah, I really yeah. feel like as much as I really don't like Cyclops, I feel like they did, they've done a really good job developing him and his motivations and moving him forward. You know. If if you had those kind of developments in every character, it would be ridiculous. You know, Colossus. Look at him. Really, the only thing he's done is flip flip flop from I'm gonna I'm gonna be with Avalon, but he's always been this good guy, good strong buff dude that just goes around trying to save people. Like yeah. we haven't seen much else from him. Superman, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for the good of the world all the time. Wolverine, what can I kill today? Like they might develop a different story for him, but you don't see them grow like that. In my opinion, you know, I, I haven't really seen many that do that. I think Spawn's done a good job, but not because I you know, love Todd McFarlane and, and the create and Spawn itself, but I really do think that the, the storyline's good. Um, but I don't think they've done the development that Cyclops has had. And that's just my opinion. But I think that's because everybody hated Cyclops, so they made him a villain and then I think that was like the best thing that could have happened to him. <laughs> well, he he's an underrated character for sure, though. I mean, like people don't realize how powerful Cyclops truly is. I mean, there's been certain instances where he's actually let loose, you know, and you, and you always forget, you know, because he's always that pompous a hole, and then and then like when he lets loose an optic blast like a mountain in half, you're like, oh my god, this guy's got, you know, he's actually way more powerful than you think he is. Yep. Yeah, so. yeah, but he gets all that. Until, like, it, that I, if I'm not mistaken, his optic blast doesn't stop until like something stops it. Hey, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like that's ridiculous. <laughs> he has the laser pointer from hell. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Jerry, we know that the elements, oh, like, yeah. those boys, got motivation. Those boys are all relatable. So. uh so, you know, and you got to talk about four of them. Ouch. <laughs> but, you know, you know, being on your lives and stuff like you, you do such a fantastic job of explaining their motivations. And, and, and anyone that listens to you talk understands that you're emotionally invested in these characters. And I think we all are. And I think that is like a major key to being a good writer or creator. Um, so, you know, they have these fantastic powers. Uh, those four brothers and uh, but they also struggle to use them and I think that's that's really that's really good so could you you know I mean please elaborate uh, of course so tell us you know what makes your guys like fallible because that's what it's about so definitely like when you watch things like Naruto or a new anime that I'm watching now like Black Clover it's a lot of people that come from nothing and, you know, they have, like, this idea, oh, I'm going to be the best. You know, I want to yeah. be Pirate King. I want to be Wizard King, you know. So, obviously, me growing up, I had a pretty difficult childhood. You know, I didn't. I grew up with practically nothing as well. And the people that always kept me on my feet, you know, were my three other friends, which are my brothers to me. You know, so I definitely wanted to create an environment where they basically had nothing. And then pretty much like the fate of the universe is kind of now resting on their shoulders. So they've also pretty much kind of been uh, kept in a bubble for say, like they was raised in an orphanage in the woods, out of the big cities and everything like that. But once 
like they get their powers. Once they start to learn their powers, once they actually have to start using their powers to actually start protecting the world, et cetera, et cetera, it's kind of like now they're going to really start to see the world of how it is. They're going to start interacting with people from the city. They're going to start seeing that it's not all sunshine and rainbows down the line as well. You know, but at the same time, their big motivation is that, yeah, we ain't got nothing, but we have people that care. If we don't do what we do, they're in danger. So no matter what, we have to do it and stuff. You know, we have to protect because it's not like they're like, yeah, we're just going to come. We're going to take a few people and then we're going to leave your planet. No, they're here to destroy the planet. They're here to take the abilities from the boys. So everybody's in danger, including the people. you. So. I want to say, I guess their motivation is to try and prevent a Batman situation for themselves. Right. You so know? With your characters, you I know they're based off you and your friends. When you're writing them, do you do you reach out to your friends and say, hey, what would you do right here? Or what would you say in this situation? Yes. <laughs> it makes it so much easier, doesn't it? Like, I'm sorry to all you guys. But <laughs> I have a question about, like, I was... I was planning a page for Caliber this week, which I think I, a couple of you may have seen. And I'm I'm actually breaking out of my own box with this one in my own way. Like I was, I'm trying to do something different with the layout, have some panel breaks and all this stuff. So I called Brad, who is Caliber, and I was like, "Hey, this, you know, we're playing D and D. I remember what you did, but we're, we kind of adjusted a few things." And I called him out because he uh, he definitely. Um, uh, what is it? I can't think of the word. He he metagamed in this situation because this was the first game where we actually set him as a null. Mm-hmm. And so when he was faced with, you know, a superpowered being, he wasn't supposed to know he was a null, but he went and faced off, of course, against Zaka anyway. And so I was like, hey, you metagamed here, so I got to fix this because you shouldn't have. Um, what would you do? And he's like, oh, well, I'm going to bounce around and do backflips because he's, you know, and he gave me all this like ridiculous things. I'm like, God, I hate you. But he, my original idea versus his, I started drawing stuff out. And I'm like, wow, this actually flows so much better than what I would have done. And I'm really happy. I mean, it's, it's challenging to me as an artist, but I thought it was really cool that, you know, if this book were just in my hands, you'd get, you know, a cool scene. But because I called him and said, hey, what would you do in this situation? All of a sudden, from his perspective, this is how I see myself as a hero. Now I've got a better page. And like with my dialogue, just with everything, it it makes it a little bit easier for me than having to put myself in the shoes of every one of my characters, you know? Like I feel for all you guys who like you have, especially I'm going to say like the Slate Universe and the Convictorverse have so many characters that I would I would probably go nuts trying to write all of them. Well, the Convictorverse uh, yeah. doesn't have a lot of characters. Pharaohverse has a lot of characters. Well, Pharaohverse, yeah. your your universe, you've got you know just a plethora of characters yeah. that you're in charge of these personalities. Well, that I do. You know, you were saying about Brad. I do. You got to remember, Sidewinder is based off my best friend Jason, mm-hmm. uh, and so I, there's there are times that I have reached out to him and said, okay. What would you? But then again, my my best friend is literally the opposite of everything. Sidewinder. Sidewinder is you know he's about you know having the best of everything. He's about making all the cash. You know, cash rules everything in his world. And you know he you know he has these suits. And if his suits gets dirty, his gear gets dirty. Guess what? The next time he's got he's got fresh gear. You know, but that's how he is because he grew up poor. So that you know that's his motivation and. But yeah, I mean, I, not quite as intricate as you do with, you know, with your fellows for sure. I mean, but I have bounced things off of him uh, and, and it helps. It does help because sometimes as a creator, you're just like, you're just like you said, you have so many characters or whatever. You just, you know, it's just, it, it is, it is nerve wracking for sure. I mean, and, definitely uh, with a spoiler, giving you guys a spoiler because the next book is going to call, is being called Burden of Truth. And uh, that, that's a cool thank name, man. Thank you. So basically, there's a scene after the awakening when they meet Clenneth and he pretty much like knocks them out, right? Takes them to an even more secluded area deeper into the woods where he's pretty much going to be training them. So to wake them up, he p- 
picks them up with like his mind, his spiritual energy, and throws them in a pool of a pool of water. So I show it to the guys, and I'm like, "Yo, what do you guys think of this?" So my brother Matthew, who's like the youngest of the group, he's like, "You got to switch this and put it this way because he's like the tune of the group." So it's like everyone is waking up because they're wet, and everyone pretty much like sees Clenneth and starts to focus on him. Meanwhile, Sky's there drowning on knee high water, you know, and he's like, damn it, like, damn this freaking planet. First, growing up is hard. Now, freaking, I'm all wet for no reason. God knows what this guy did to us, knocking us unconscious. Like, he's just going off. So everyone's like, yo, Sky, stop and focus. And he's like, oh, snap, he's right there. Like, that's him to the T. That's that's exactly his personality. So being able to reach out to him and he's like, yeah, you got to do it this way. That's what I would do. And I'm like, yeah, that's 100 percent you like <laughs> that's exactly what you would do. It's it's great. You know, so it definitely takes a lot of the load off of my back. That's awesome. Sort of related like Hell Wolf. I have Jack and Nate. I can bounce it off of. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, and of course, I have Chris. So, yeah, yeah. They, they, share, they, they share a surname. Yeah, that's my first character I've ever been, and I—it's funny because I get to create my own characters, but I'll, I'll dabble in it later. I mean, I, I have now, but it just—it'll take a long time for them to hit the book. Um, mm. I like writing the enemies. I like writing the scenes. You know, that's that's something I really get passionate about: is what's around my heroes, what world are they living in. Um, I like being the boss in the book, like Shaw. I think it's funny because he's motivated strictly by having the top company, the most money and marketing everything. And it's funny because I was just approached today by a film company that wants me to be their marketing manager. Um, and I was like, you know, it's funny because that's the role I take in my game is like the boss and the marketing and like sales. <laughs> so th those are the characters I write, you know, I let Brad and Terrell write their own lines and all the sarcasm and, you know, the, the bolder moments we'll call them. <laughs> Those bold moments. Well, speaking of, I mean, we, we actually talked about Boulder's personality the other day, me, Boulder, and, and, and Terrell, well, Terrell and, and Brad, because, you know, Boulder has a very specific personality when he's in that Boulder mode. You know, Terrell is actually a very intelligent individual. He's, he's hard-headed, and I think that's, you know, we're talking about the fallible parts of our characters. Boulder is... He, he tries to be the best. He tries to be all, you know, always doing good by people. But the problem is he is, he's stubborn, he's hard headed and he sometimes acts on that. And by doing so, it's not, it's not good. You know, I, I've talked about D and D before and alignments and your, you know, your, your, your good characters are actually really few and far between because mm. it's almost impossible, impossible to be a lawful good character. You know, we all have a selfish tendency, every one of us, no matter who we are, you know, and, and the minute you become selfish or you make a selfish act, you're not, you know, a lawful good person. And that was hard for Terrell to understand. You know, that was that was a struggle for him. And I think that it's interesting to have a character that struggles to be better. I, I You know, we don't really have a lot of those. I, and that's an anime trope. You know, you're talking about Black Clover, like the main character in Black Clover, Brad hates him because he's a whiny little kid. <laughs> I love that dude. I love that character. He has no powers whatsoever, but he wants to be the most powerful. Yep. And he's got like this book, which I'm not going to spoil too much for you because I, I love that series and I'm pretty far into it. Mm -hmm. But those characters that just want to be, want to be you want to help people want to get out there and do something and their motivation is literally just to help people that's that's few and far between we always have a selfish motivation in there yeah i want to help people but i want to help people because you know and and i i think that's a that's a character trope that's not really explored a lot i yeah. love the bond like for me it's I love to see the brotherhood, the bond. Like, even the, the art that uh, Dennis did with Omen and Colt, like, they were holding Colt back yep. for whatever reason. Like, he's pissed off. He's ready to go off the chain, 
But like his, you know, his boys are like holding him back, like yo, not yet, like chill out, you know. Like, well, like I said, you read, you read the script, like that totally makes sense with his character. <laughs> so, like that guy I, is, I, it, <laughs> you know, you see the connection is, between Asta and Yuna, and it's like they both want to be Wizard King, but Yuna is the prodigy. He has the most rarest book. He has unlimited mana, and like Asta has nothing. But at the same time, you know, Yuna's like. Asta, you're my rival. So just by that alone, yeah. it's like that's motivating Asta. Like I can never fail. Like when that dude was stomping on Asta, mm -hmm. and then you know was just like, "Yo, he's not garbage. He's my rival." And then that's when Asta woke up. Was like, "You're right. I am your rival. Let me stop playing around." And then he got up, and it's just like that bond, that brotherhood. Like I said, because that that's what reaches out to me because. I feel like that's how I survived growing up. Goes a long way with me, you know. Yeah, you know, one Nick Nick was was posting on Facebook a week or two ago from uh, you know Demon Hunter, um, and he asked, who, "What what do you like better, uh, you know, anime storytelling or comic book storytelling?" And we 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 do have a very different style of storytelling between the two. So with anime and manga you get a more real world look at the characters. They're very fallible. You know, they have so many personality quirks about them. And I use quirks, although I'm not going to reference My Hero Academia, but you look at, you look at My Hero, you look at all the, the, the popular mangas and, and those things, and they're very human. You know, you, you, you watch one for five minutes and although some of them are really annoying, you know, just, being real, um, the, the main character trope that I hate is the the creepy brother incest thing that they always have in every series. It's really weird, but apparently it's a thing over there. You know, like Team Rocket. <laughs> like, every Japanese series it's straight up Team Rocket, man. Incest thing, <laughs> yeah. But but they they do have some really approachable characters. You know, you look at Asta. You you look at you know, Black Clover, you look at these things and, you know, one, one story I talk about a lot with my friends is Death Note. This dude's literally given the power to kill anybody in the world at any given time as long as he knows their name and he's seen their face. Like, you know, and he goes off on this, this journey to rid the world of bad people and he winds up controlling the world. Like, you know, like, take a character arc. That's crazy. <laughs> and we don't, you know, and and we talk about relatable. We talk about fallible. His own like issue is that he wants to, you know, help the world and winds up trying to rule the world because really his only way of helping the world is to rule them because they're going to fight back. And so, like, we can relate to that. I mean, I could. You give me a book to kill people, and there's a list for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I I don't watch. <laughs> Yeah. I don't watch a lot of anime. Like I think I've made that more than clear. But what I have been watching recently is the Pacific Rim anime on Netflix. I finished yeah. it. And, 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 <laughs> and I'm no few spoilers, episodes yeah. in. And, and I will tell you that the, uh, the character May, mm -hmm. like, uh, that's a, that's a well-written character. Like, uh, you, you know, she starts out as a, you know, as a, Impossible villain, but there's a backstory there, and it's explored, and you it flips the script on you to the point where you're like, okay, you can kind of understand why she's the way she is. I mean, there's, I mean, without spoilers, but you know, there's a point where you know the 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 heroes are completely blown away that she literally just cold straight up murders somebody because that is even you know they they weren't she told them not to kill this person, she kills this person. Like, it's just. She, uh, it's just the character, like, and like, I find myself really, really intrigued by that character. I, I you know, like I said I'm only like four or five episodes in, so I, I plan, you know, I can't wait to learn more about her. I mean, you know, the heroes, that's it's great, you know, whatever. But that character really intrigued the hell out of me. Chris, <clears throat> Jerry, can I ask you a question? Yeah, I was going to ask you a question. Like, this is for Chris and Jared specifically, just because you guys have multiple characters and these characters are based on people you know. Mm -hmm. Do you ever get pushback from your friends 
about how you're depicting them. Like they like saying like you always want to depict them in a positive light and not their their actual flaws that you know you want to put in print. And they're like, no, don't tell them about this or don't show them that. Do you get pushback on that? Yes, big time. I do. Like yeah, for yeah. example, one of the pushbacks that I was getting was, um, how bloody do I want to make the elements? Do I am I looking to make it gruesome or am I looking to make it in between? Um, I'm looking to make it like PG-13, you know, stuff like that. And it's just like, in a way, I kind of want to make it a bit gruesome. But at the same time, it's kind of like it doesn't feel right just yet. So a lot of the guys are like, you know, nah, man, just make it as bloody as possible. You know, I want Hydro to be able to, like, free somebody and take his head off. And it's like, maybe later. <laughs> All right. But I just yeah. feel like something like that is just a little too big too fast you know so and it's kind of like with character development once again like once they get yeah as i say you could use that as a developing factor for yeah exactly yeah the more powerful they get uh, yeah and stuff and they start to like for example we we're planning on making one of the brothers actually turn dark later on in the season and it's partial because they start to see how the world is and it really starts to bother them you know and me, as for example, as a first responder, I see the good in people and I've seen the worst in people. Oh, I can imagine. You yeah. know, so one of yeah. my coworkers just literally got her cheek almost bitten off completely, you know, last week. A medic, you know, and things like that takes a toll on people. And that's definitely something that I would like to implement, but it's not something I just want to jump into right away. You definitely got to take those steps to get, you know, to that, you know, to that factor where they're like, kind of like, all right, yo, screw this. I can't deal with this no more. Mm -hmm. I'm going nuts, you know, and, and that's how I, it is. I get a lot of pushback from my team. And I think that's what makes crit actually grow, to be honest with you. I mean, look at, look at issue zero, just look at the artwork and the direction that I was going in issue zero. Okay. I had Captain Ant-Man. I had general, you know, generic caliber and reach. Paladin. Don't hit. forget about Paladin. <laughs> Shut up. Okay. So I had the most <laughs> generic ripoff team I could have created only be and honestly, because I had no direction of what these guys were supposed to look like. And I was watching movies and looking at action figures. And I was like, Hey, I just want to draw this. I didn't care because they weren't me. Right. Yeah. So I give this to the guys and I'm like, Hey, I drew you. And I get, oh, that's cool. And then the first one that pipes up is Terrell. It's like, hey, like, I hate the mask. Um, that's got to go. <laughs> I don't want to use my shield anymore because I really just want to punch things. I think holding a shield is stupid. Um, you know, and all these, when they saw the characters for the first time on paper, all of a sudden it became real to them. And they're like, that's not me. Yeah. So while, you know, it kind of hurt hearing I don't like that. <laughs> Re being real, you know, it, it it motivated them to say, hey, this is what my character should look like. And then I ha I feel like I have some really cool looking characters because we started bouncing ideas back and forth and made really cool designs. And then, you know, we talk about the violence and the language. Issue zero, Caliber straight up blows a guy's head off because it happened in the game. He rolled a nat 20 with an M16, you know, and then he's and after the M16, he's like, yeah, I'm going to carry two pistols because it's just way too overpowered. But like that happened. He comes around the corner with my original issue zero, blows a dude's head off, you know, and, and I had everybody at the table cussing at the time. So when I'm drawing it and writing it out, there's F-bombs, there's all these, this bad language. Terrell sees it and says, hey, like, I'd really like to show my daughter this. Can we dial back the language? Yeah, no problem. You know, Brad sees something and he goes, hey, like, um, my character is going to be sarcastic. He's going to not pay attention, just like me. He's going to be everything that I am. Don't have me be the leader of the team. I don't want to be that, you know, and because my original depiction was he was the one calling the shots and he didn't want to be that way. So my team is very heavily involved in how they're depicted. After issue one, um, when I was drawing issue two, midway into issue two, Terrell calls me and says, hey, can you not make me frown in every picture? And I'm like, dude, you were upset this entire issue because you just got out of surgery he had to have his tricep um he had uh, tendonitis he had surgery on it i'm like you were on drugs and you were in pain so you were frowning the whole time like i'm depicting you as you played and he goes yeah but boulder needs to smile 
Boulder needs to be that smiling, happy character, even through the pain. And I was like, okay, that's fine. So now every time I have a chance, like when Boulder goes to do something, he's smiling. Issue three, you see that. End of issue two, you saw that a lot, like Boulder smiling, because that's his character. And so like, they are heavily involved from start to finish. Every page I finish, I send it to them. What do you think? Yeah. You know, yep. reach his one, his two, his two requests. I want to be in a trench coat. I want to be fat. <laughs> okay. Nice. Spectre. Um, yeah. Spectre was a pain, dude. I drew Spectre like you. I, 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 you know, he's a huge anime fan. I gave him some Power Ranger looking armor at one point. I drew this dude as a flaming skull. I drew 50 freaking versions of this kid. Finally, I drew Austin in a jacket with a mask. Oh, I love that. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> like, I asked him, I said, hey, I'm about to break your mask in issue three. Do you want a new look? Do you want? No, no, no. I never want to not have a hoodie, a jacket, and just, just a mask. And the mask is because it covers his actual ability. He's like, that's all I want. I don't want to grow the look. I, I, if anything, give me because he owns his own coffee shop at some point. He's like, give me a black hat shirt. That's it. Like, I don't want a suit. He's like, I think it's really cool that my character doesn't have a super suit. I literally go into battle, like just throwing myself out there, you know, and he's like, it's also easy for me to sneak around because all I have to do is take my mask off and not activate my powers. And no one knows I'm a superhero. Like to me, when I was drawing Spectre, you have a Ghost Rider style character. Why aren't you going to make him badass looking? But then I drew him and I continually draw him. And I'm like, you know what? He is kind of badass in his own way. Like now I see it. But I didn't until he had that that piece of, of hey, this is what I want. You know? And like Bones, I love Kid. Don't get me wrong. But he didn't give me any direction. I just started drawing. And finally he's like, I just want a skull style mask. I want a skull on the shield and make me look like a big giant football player. So I go to Nate and I'm like, man, I can't draw this. I have, I'm, I'm racking my brain. He draws it perfectly. And now we've got bones. So like everybody's involved and everybody's into it. The only one really is kid kid. When he first joins that I really don't want any part of the comic book because he's, you know, he's working all the time. He has his own life on the side. He's actually not part of my core group of friends where we, you know, we're good friends and everything, but he's not like part of our group. So he's like, Hey, you know, don't really have to involve me, but you know, if you want to ask me questions, that's fine. But I really don't want to, I don't want to mess up what you're doing. And so when I sent him the, the script for issue four, he was like, Oh, I get to beat everybody up. Okay, cool. Like, and then we, we started talking about future issues and I was like, hey, I'm going to have your character do this. And he was like, man, I love that. So it's cool to get his feedback, but I don't, I get more creative control with Bones than I do everybody else. Like I really, Boulder and Caliber, I have zero creative control outside of, hey, I really feel like they should be doing this. And they'll take my opinion into consideration. But nine times out of 10, I wind up drawing something I really don't want to draw. <laughs> <laughs> We've, uh, We've tossed the word foul ball around. That's even in the topic description. Uh, so let's maybe you may, let's go around and actually let's describe something about our characters slash characters that actually makes them foul ball in your opinion, whether it's a personality trait or well, I guess it probably would be or, or a learning curve. Like Dennis had already said that, you know, uh, Celestial Knight isn't, you know, adept at combat yet, you know, um, so, Nate, tell me about tell me what makes Omen fallible as a hero, anti-hero, you know, whatever. Well, as I said before, personality-wise, he's he's fairly arrogant and cocky with the fact that he's one of these only only one of these people who can actually harness mm. magic and use it to what he wants to do with it. Um, but saying that, he's very hot. He's very hot-tempered. He's very quick to anger, which mm. you'll make um make him second get second guess himself um which goes back on um ptsd from being institutionalized as well he's never really gonna go all out and second guess everything right. he does against people because he doesn't want to be responsible for killing another innocent person so to say 
So awesome. he's got that story where he's never he's not. I don't want to say better words than this. Um, yeah, he's not completely committed into fighting him to instantly wiping it out. He's going to constantly be second guessing himself the whole time, not knowing if this is a good guy, this is a bad guy. What am I going to do? And yeah, if they get him rolled up enough, he'll he'll stop second guessing himself. The flick will switch and it will just I lose his temper and just make a mistake. Right. Fairly often too. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but that's good. Fairly often is a relatable thing because we're all we all go through life and we all make mistakes, small ones, but, large ones, you know. So that's awesome, man. No, that's that's a I think that is something someone can gravitate towards for sure. <clears throat> Who's next? Awesome. Does he have like a uh, I guess a magic limit as well? Like he runs oh, out of mana or uh, energy. The thing is, uh, so magic is not unlimited. It's the person's ability to channel the magic and just exhaust him after a, a certain amount of time. Mm. You just physically can't do it. Yeah, I ask because I feel like that's one of the greatest things within stories that you can also use to develop. Uh, so, so that's the another reason why he's um, covered in his tattoos, his runes. They mm. offer certain protections against certain things like fireballs, fireballs anything like that but once they've been used they've been used and he has to take a, a step back for a day or so and re magically recharge that particular tattoo otherwise if he goes into another fight someone's got a gun and the, the room's not working bullet's going to go straight through so like later on down the line he's going to be able to use those ruins longer and longer and they become yeah, the more, the more he'll yeah, learn about his powers, the, the more powerful certain things will become because I think that's always like the greatest thing about watching these shows is that like take Naruto, for instance, his biggest thing was making shadow clones in the beginning. Yeah. Now you see what he can do with the nine tail energy becoming Hokage. Like it's just this is a kid that can only make a few clones of himself in the beginning that the town didn't like. And then you watch that entire development character wise and ability wise. I think it's what Thing. He's starting out with the basics, throw fireballs, throw lightning bolts. Is what he was trained to do by um, Ao. But later on, when he starts learning more, meeting new people who will teach him more, he be able mm -hmm. to turn that um, abilities into other other spells, which are bigger and more powerful and different different tricks up his sleeve. Awesome. Who wants to go next? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'll go last, or I'll go second to last. You can go last. All right, you go second to last. All right, yeah. so you, I'll we'll go last, last. Chris, go second to last. We talk so, way too much, but these guys... Yeah. Yeah. This, yeah. Dennis, I, I know you already what? elaborated, Dennis, but go. Yeah, I think... Well, you know, I, I think one of the interesting things about being fallible, and I'm struggling with this now, is the more I write the character, the more it's becoming... Um, and I'm sure you guys have touched on it, like when you've written things, it's more becoming about your feelings your background, your beliefs, and how to separate them from actual putting out, being vulnerable, right. pulling your vulnerabilities on a piece of paper for everyone to see. And like, I know when I pitched this to my wife, she goes, is this you? Like, and I was like, I didn't think it was. Like, I thought I was just writing a character. And the more I thought about it, the more I developed, I was like, shit. Like, he cared a lot of me. And the part That's is cool. pulling that fallible part. Yeah, but putting it on paper and then putting it in front of you dudes or putting it in front of like all these people, like, I think that's, for me, um, it's just really awkward. Um, and I just wonder if you guys have pieces coming out, like, and what part of your character that's fallible are you putting out there? And that's why I ask you guys the question. Your friends, you're putting your characters, your friends' characters are your characters that are based on their fallible qualities are putting put on paper. Are they comfortable with that? Like, how far do you go with it? Do you really rein it back? And like, I see Chris laughing because I mean, I'm sure I pull some of that back because I'm like, I don't want to put some of that stuff on paper but that's what makes a character relatable and that's what yeah. i relate when i meet people like that's what brings me closer to people um but yeah like for my guy it's that um I'm gonna, there's a, look, a bunch of topics i want to touch on in the book and i think one of them is um obviously i think you mentioned it guilt um failure um guilt and failure but more in for lack of a better word um the american dream and I say that because I'm an immigrant where I came to this country and the dream that we had and uh, how I relate that dream to guilt and failure and that how it's going to develop my character as he presses. So um, that in a nutshell was 
like a lot of the faults of my character. Who's next? That's good. No, you know, I think as art, I think as writers, you, we we do tend to lean into into ourselves. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely that's part of the process. But uh, Chris mm-hmm. pointed somebody. Who's going, Chris? Oh, oh I was just pointing away from 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 uh, over that way. So I guess Jack uh, gets to go next. Yeah, let's talk about Cole, yeah. Jack, or or Gr- or Grimm. Oh, you yeah. talk about somebody else. Who's that people? <laughs> So, and I'll stick with Cole. He's, he's he's my main focus. Um, um, I, I I try to make Colt as very um, fa- uh, there's lots of faults. That's 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 um yeah. that's the ideal behind Colt. He's he's got a lot of them, you know. And that's that we as we go through his story, he um that's what his story is built on. Um, trying to um fix those faults. So for example. Like, like you guys read in the script, the guys that have read it, he's very pissed off. Like he's, um, he's, he's, he hates that he had, doesn't have control over, um, you know, it, you know, everything sort of thing. So he, he's, he's kind of on a, um, on a, you know, on a quest to, he's in a dark place. So he's, um, he's just trying to, he's trying to find something, find a, um, some sort of, reason you know to, to 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 live if anything you know what i mean so um yeah he's very flawed in in, in a lot of ways like um his anger he's yeah like uh without trying to give away too much it, probably his anger is probably his number one flaw he uh yeah you'll see a lot come out in the in the first issue anyway so yeah it, it's probably his anger is his main flaw to be honest yeah, to give a little. He pushes bit of away faith. a lot of people. He pushes away a lot of people for, uh, for his anger, and yeah. he's essentially a loner. So yeah. Does Cole have any abilities, or he's like just straight human, like just? So he's he's human. He um he comes from a uh, military background, so he's like uh, ex black ops. You know, like I, I I don't know the terminology. Maybe Jason can come in and help me out there. <laughs> but he's like yeah, um, right. I mean, well, I mean, he's, he's a badass. Just, you know, yeah, it's, yeah it's spec ops. Yeah. It yeah, was, so he's like military yeah. badass, and yeah. um, he was working for AO as well. And um, he, like Omen, him and his team realize that AO weren't, you know, they're not, you know, what they say they are, and they go off on their own sort of thing. But um, when they were, when he was on a mission, he was um, caught in the crossfire of a, like a, a magical explosion. I won't go too much into that because that'll give away a big um, book I have planned for next year. But um, it gave Colt the ability to um, to to see monsters and stuff that live inside the Slate universe. So that's part of his thing. He's um, I guess you could say that's another flaw of his as well. Like now that he can see these monsters and he can see that the world wasn't what he thought it was, it's kind of freaked him out a lot. And he's he's in a state of it's like he's you could say he's scared. And um, but with his um military background, you know, protect and serve and all that. He, he feels like he's a, he's obligated to go out and take out all these monsters. And that's uh, and another flaw he has is his arrogance. Like, he doesn't know what he's going up against. He's just going to go out there and kill everything that's not human. And, um, you know, through the story, we, we, we realise that, um, you know, he meets people that explain to him that, you know, not all monsters are monsters. And there's um, he's very story-driven. So, um, yeah. Awesome, awesome. All right, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess my guys, you know, it's pretty obvious when you're looking at the element version of them and stuff like fire would be water, lightning mm-hmm. would be wind, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But I guess one of their biggest things is that, you know, they're kind of still kids, you know, so there's still a lot that they have to learn and stuff and that kind of leaves them vulnerable which is why why Clenneth comes into the picture because Clenneth also has his space military training you know that was what he did mm-hmm. you know where he's from and stuff when he was part of the the special council so he has to train them on how to be you know responsible how they're gonna have to start reacting to these situations and and taking care of these situations. So I pretty much would say that it's like their youth and stuff. That is like their biggest weakness right now. Their but. youth, yeah. That's actually, that's that's good though. Because like I said, that off can offer its, I mean, we've all been young. We've all made those kind of mistakes. And uh, 
So that you got you, you actually have a lot of material you can pull on. Um, so that's no, that's good. Youth is always a really good motivator uh, for a, a character's identity and you know, ch- you know their 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 wins and losses. You know, but, and he kind of got like that Goku Vegeta vibe going between. Yeah. Because even growing up, we all did martial arts. So we were constantly training with each other, constantly fighting, and it was just to get the best of one another. So yeah. it's like if one of the characters reach like a new level, the others are like, oh, hell no. We got to get to that level and pass him. Like, there's no way he's right. behind. And that makes them work even harder. You know? So they get like that motivation from each other and they start to build on that. And stuff. So that's good. That's awesome. All right, Chris. Okay. Um, I'll go down my line. So <laughs> I'll throw Obi because he's, he's really easy. Um, Obi really, his only fallible part is he actually is, uh, he's a coward in, 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 in reality. He's dragged into, like, he wants to be a hero with his friends. But he's more interested in technology and learning things. And we see this as the story goes on. When he's faced with a challenge, he'll get to a certain point. Like there's a fight that happens where he actually gets the team to the bad guy that they are supposed to take out. And because he has cloaking technology, he cloaks and and dips out on them. But he does kind of get caught in the midst of battle and is forced to fight. But he will take the the route of you know the path of least resistance for him because he's just obsessed with technology. Um, he he his in, in really in reality his his biggest flaw is his own intelligence because it gets in the way of his emotion. So you know where he would want to be able to help his team he logically can't think about it. He, he actually goes through a, a period where he loses someone very important to him and it doesn't face him at all uh, because he, he's like, uh, there's a, um, from Fringe, the, the really smart old man in Fringe, he's similar to that where he just doesn't process emotion as well. So that's his flaw. Spectre, his flaw is his own, his own um, arrogance and desire to prove himself he's constantly going ahead of the team going against and just doing what he wants to do because he feels his way is right he feels like he's got to go out and prove that he's the powerful one that he can take on everything on his own because he knows he has area of effect he know he has a, a literal you know god bound to him because Samedi is a, a geed which in my, my my world are like gods and so he feels like he is the most powerful, but that always doesn't work for him because he doesn't even listen to the God that's bound to him. So there's, you know, there's him. Boulder's biggest flaw is his own, his own arrogance and hard-headedness and stubbornness. Uh, I'll take away arrogant because he's not really arrogant, but he is very stubborn, very hard-headed. And he wants everyone to like him. And that's impossible. Even when you are a hero that stands up for everything, not everyone's going to like you. They're going to find something wrong. And he faces those challenges. And right now we're actually going through it. And he's not sure how to handle it. He's not sure how to handle a group of people that did like him now not like him. That's tough, especially for someone who tries really hard to protect and be there for people. And then there's Calibre. Caliber has been in the system. You know, he has literally been a police officer. He's been a federal officer. He's seen the darkest of dark. I mean, even, you know, you're talking about being a first responder. I mean, Brad literally has taken, you know, worked with uh, the DEA and, and taken, um, you know, down cartel things and done stuff that, like, I wouldn't even know what to do with some of the stuff that he's come in contact with. And so that's one of his his flaws i would say is you know he doesn't see sometimes the the possibility of a good side of a person he just sees this is what you're doing which is similar to what this person did and this is how they ended so i just want to stop you before you get there and sometimes him and boulder clash because boulder wants to save someone 
and maybe turn them around and rehabilitate them where he's like, no, this guy's a bad guy. He just needs to go. And so, you know, that, that's, that's like his flaw is it. He's, he's fighting himself sometimes to be a good hero when he knows deep in his heart, he's not a hero. He's just the guy that's going to get the job done. And there are situations where he owns that, and understands that he's the one that has to make those difficult decisions that somebody else won't. You know, you look at the Batman situation. This is, you know, if Batman continually lets the Joker go, Joker is going to continually kill someone. Caliber will not let that person go. You know, if he meets someone and, you know, they're in a world where people are starting to get abilities and this person maybe does something bad, but didn't do it for a bad reason. He's willing to maybe work with them. But if this person just all right, all out killed somebody, no, you got to go. You know, we're, we're taught from a young age, killing someone's bad. You know, this is how he, he views life. You've been told since the day you were born, no matter where you're at, it's not like we have to put a label on something. You've been told it's bad to kill someone. You killed someone for no good reason, just to further yourself. So no, eye for an eye, I'm done with you. You're going to go. Boulder's like, but wait, 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 we might be able to save him. You know, and that's where they clash, and so that that's it, his flaw. And um, you know, th those are my my core characters. I'm not going to go into Samedi because his own flaw is that he's not even from this world and doesn't really understand humanity <laughs> all too much, even though he's been around for centuries. He still doesn't get the fact that you know we we kill each other and you know we we destroy things and we're selfish and we value inanimate objects more than our own lives. That's mm -hmm. he he's at this point where he's seen the destruction of of an entire race of beings. And is like, I still don't understand why you can idolize, you know, like a, a movie star, but you can't take care of your grandma. Like that's where Samedi is in, in this, in this world that we live in um, because he's a geed. And in, in my world, the geed are the facilitators of life and death. And he himself is one of the most powerful he's been, you know, and, and he literally facilitates souls to and from bodies. And so he knows the value of a life and the value of a soul. And he's seen an entire population of people wiped out. And we still war. We still go to war with each other. We still argue over things that don't matter. And he's over here, like just, just done. He's sarcastic. He doesn't really want to be involved because for him, it's like, you're never changing. It's a con continuous cycle for humanity to destroy itself. And so that that's where you see some flaws is, He's kind of burned out, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I guess that leaves me, huh? Uh, <laughs> uh, so, I, I'll talk about two of my characters. I thought, uh, obviously, you know, I have the Convictor, and I'm just going to set, settle on Hell, uh, on Hell Wolf, too, because they're both in Hunter's Moon. Because uh, they're two completely different personality types. Uh, I'll start with the Convictor. His greatest fallible thing is his greatest strength you know being someone that will not quit is his weakness uh you know anybody that's you know some of you folks in here that have seen the panels for hunter's moon you know that a lot transpires and he to the point where he having this trait and having this you know this never quit attitude uh or it's more than an attitude obviously um i mean it, that it puts him in a spot where he literally is destroying himself uh because his will is more powerful than his physical body um so that is you know and i and i that's what i like about him because i believe like that he's you know, his, uh, I mean, like a lot of characters, his greatest strength is all his, so his weakness. It's something that is very detrimental to him physically. Uh, and it doesn't help that he's, you know, he's a vehicle that's piloted remotely, you know, via somewhere, you know, some other place. So that also doesn't help. Um, so a lot, you know, a lot of things that happens with him is beyond his, uh, his control, but he believes he is in control. So there's there's a little bit of that, and then way back when for him as an early development character before he ever became the convictor or you know, or, you know whatever, he was 
a person who always wanted to belong. So there's that. He was always seeking a, an identity. Uh, so that also shaped him very early on that, you know, that he's willing to do anything to, you know, to hang on to a little bit of normalcy that he would have. And, uh, you know, and then once you lose something like that over and over and over, uh, you know, it, it shapes you as a person. And, um, and then having to meditate, you know, or whatever, that's why, you know, this, this will, you know, that's a, that, you know, that in, interplays with that and it, and it formulates a very unique individual. I believe he's unique, um, that he, again, he is literally willing to put himself through these extreme trials, sometimes not even knowing why, because he thinks he's, he's just compelled to do it. Again, he's driven to do it and, uh, driven is the key word. But you know that that's that for me personally. That's why I think the best thing for about him is that is like I said, his greatest you know his will is his weakness. Uh, at some point, his I mean he he still he's not superhuman. He's not enhanced anything like that. So his body does take the abuse, and it it wears. You know, it's not like he doesn't have a healing factor. He doesn't have anything like that. He just pushes himself physically uh, beyond these physical pain because of his will. So, and his body is not going to keep up. It won't keep up. And, uh, you know, you'll see that later on um, going further. So now the next character I have is Hellwolf. It was a completely opposite perspective. Chris is lettering. And you, Chris and I were laughing because uh, we were doing a lot of Hellwolf's dialogue. And Hellwolf is a completely different character. Um, he is, uh, he's, you know, he's motivated by, you know, he's motivated by money. He's motivated by greed, really. Um, he Does he have, I can tell you about the character that you won't pick up so much on in Hunter's Moon, but does he have a, a, a heroic side? Uh he at one time he was he you know one time he you know he was he was you know he was a special forces for you know the australian sas he was you know he was a quote-unquote good guy um and he has that ability but he also has something that overshadows all of that and that is his mouth <laughs> um he he absolutely will talk the shit to get himself out of what he believes is the shit, but at the same time, he will absolutely make sure you know why he's talking himself out of said shit. He makes sure that you know that he is the shit in, in this situation, even though, so you're going to see this in Hunter's Moon, like he has a a, a very, he, he gets to a, very, a point where it literally is not looking good for him, and he is still very much a mouth, <laughs> you know, and he, and he's, he's, you know, he's, he's motivated, but you know, is he, is he, can he be cow cowardly? Yeah, sure. I guess he could. I mean, I think we're all prone to that. And, um, you know, I think there's moments where you second guess, like, well, why would I go do that when it's much easier for me to, you know, to, you know, run, run away or much easier to escape the area. Um, you know, it's always about, you know, the, he's very much a character that is absolutely self-preservation is key. But if he's one of he's he's going to try to self, you know, self-preserve, he has no problem making sure you know that he's still the guy that's going to run the show. So you, I said I can't give too much away, but in Hunter's Moon there is a very specific scenes, and that he is <laughs> it, 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 it literally he. I wish I, I wish I, I mean, I wish I could, you know, but I, I wish I could, but he, he literally is faced with immense danger. <laughs> and I mean, like, you know, literally like <laughs> danger, close stuff. And, and he is try a tries to talk his way out of it, but B tries to let you know that even though he's trying to talk his way out of it, he's still top dog. You know, so there's that, and you're gonna. So that's his personality. He is, and and uh, in the Hell Wolf book that you know that we're gonna explore, you're gonna see some of that. Um, that he is very much. That's how he is, but he has his moments. You know, he's uh, he's you know he's kind of that way. He is so he he's he's a complex character. He doesn't seem like he seems like a guy with a cool helmet, you know, and sharp things on his arms, and you know he's blowing shit up and talking really, you know 
badass Aussie and all that stuff. But he has his moments. And uh, other than that, I mean, the other character in, in, in Hunter's Moon is the Wolfman. His motivation I can't talk about because that's very key to the book. Uh, that's uh, his whole, his whole, uh, his, you, it's, yeah, I, I can't really, you know, you, you'll see. But, uh, and as for Dracula, the only other major character in the book, he's just an asshole. <laughs> I mean, that's just, he, he just, he just is. Like, and Chris, you know, Chris and I have discussed this uh, about, he just is. He's a guy who's gotten to a certain point in the hundreds of years he's been alive that he's become so full of his own bullshit that he he is elevated in his own mind. You know, he's much you know he's much bigger than he, well, he believes he's, he's you know he believes he's bigger than anybody else. You know, uh, you know, stature wise. So yeah, so he's just he's just a he's just a prick. He wishes just is. And and by the end of this book, my goal is for every single one of you to hate Dracula's guts. So, uh, because he is a he, especially his interactions with uh, you know, with the Wolfman, and um, you're really going to see that this somebody needs to cave this dude's head in. So, uh, and who knows? You know, it might happen. <laughs> so, so that yeah, that that's that's pretty much where I'm at. I mean, I could go on about Conjure and stuff, but that's you know, that's a whole show in itself. But um, yeah. So that's where we're at. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I think. I think each one of us literally described a different aspect of our characters that we, you know, there's, there's similarities, but I think we're all very unique. And I think that is exactly what the premise, I think, you know, what we wanted to do here. Uh, everybody is just has a different motivation for their OCs. And that motivation isn't my OC can beat up your OC. He's the biggest, baddest OC going. You know, if you, you know, if I'm going to tell you right now. 35 OCs that are just so overpowered. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now. If you say that, all that freaking tells me as a writer is that you suck. That's what it tells me. It tells me as a writer that you aren't a writer. You know, you, I mean, sorry, this is the end of the time of the show where I kind of cut loose, right? But no, it just, no, really, it tells me as a writer that. You did you 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 suck at character development, or you just didn't try, and that you think that having a character that can literally stomp any other character, blah 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 blah, you know, it just tells me that you lack imagination, you lack depth, and uh, and that's bad writing, that's bad creating. Dude, so, that's the reason thank- why I keep saying I fucking hate One Punch Man. I know, <laughs> like, and people tell me the the creator just made it for fun. That's fine, but I hate the fucking show. Like, it, 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 bullshit reasons why he's so powerful, and it's just like, okay, Rock Lee does quadruple what you claim you do every day, so he should be God, you know, like. Yeah, it's not a yeah. good enough reason for me why this man is so powerful. Like, you know, you're right. Like, that's a perfect example of that. Like, you have. To, I told my brother if you want me to watch it, maybe later down the seasons, if they finally reveal why he's so powerful and it makes sense, I'll give it a try. But until then, fuck that show. I can't. <laughs> I can't do it. Uh, wow. Yes. Yeah. Wow, Jerry. That's uh, those are some intense words. I mean, I would expect that out of like my mouth or Jason's mouth. <laughs> Yo, I can't do it. I'm sorry. So I'm, you don't like one punch man? I'm I'm not a fan of One Punch, but I know the the premise behind it. It was never supposed to be this big thing. It was just supposed to be a, a you know a webtoon, and it just took off. So um, he was supposed to be a, a, you know making fun of how overpowered everybody is, and then now it's a thing. <laughs> Oh, my stuff's on the screen. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's on the screen, bro. <laughs> uh, I, I guess it from my little screen. tablet. <laughs> um, awesome thing. While we were on this, I went from thirty-six to thirty-seven backers. We're oh yeah. Uh, yeah, all right, man. Nice. So awesome. that's awesome. I want to thank everybody that's already jumped in. All the creators I know that have supported. Thank you. All the new. Actually, you know, almost forty percent of the backers on this are brand new people that I've never talked to. So. Yo, you told me some dude from freaking China or Japan beat me as yeah. number one. Like, <laughs> really? So, so really cool. 
you know, this Indiegogo for me was a little bit of an experiment because, you know, I've heard a lot of different good and bad things about it. I wanted to give it a shot. And my first backer was someone from another country that I've never interacted with before, went from Indiegogo, followed me on Instagram, followed the Facebook page. So awesome. that right there that's is a win. win. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's awesome. a win. Yeah. I've looked through the names on here. I recognize quite a few. So thank you, everybody, that I do know that's already backed it. But I see a lot of people that have never looked at crit before. And I ain't backing that shit. Yeah, you should. In fact, you know what? You should pull, you should pull any backing in the future as well. Uh, crit sucks. Crit is shit. But no. Um, <laughs> crit shit. <laughs> but, uh, uh, fuck. That's a new one. We're running with it. <laughs> That's my new one is actually talking crit. That's what you should call your shop. Crit shit. <laughs> <laughs> but India is doing really well. Like I said, it's it's a new beast. I've heard good and bad things, and so far I've only seen good. I mean, sitting at 35 backers or 37 backers right now, uh, 261% to goal with 17 days left. Uh, that's that's freaking awesome. And I told I told you, Chris. Like I'm I'm tempted to drop Hunter's Moon on Indiegogo. You know, it, I, once it's once it's completed. So I mean, your your success has led me to believe that that's something we could do as well. So yeah, it's a different beast. And you know, I've gotten I've gotten really good feedback. I've gotten a few new followers. I, I don't know what's going on with Instagram. I got like 150 followers in the past five days. I don't know if, if it's coming from stuff from this or what's going on, but. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they they put me on the front of the page for a day. I thought that was really cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. You know, exposure I didn't get from Kickstarter. So I'll definitely be coming back to Indiegogo at some point. Um, I do know from market research, Indiegogo generally doesn't do as well as Kickstarter. But the fact that, you know, we got 500 bucks in six, uh, 12 hours, I think it funded. Um, it's just awesome. So, so yeah, if you haven't checked out Crit on, on Indiegogo, you can go to Indiegogo and just type in crit. I think I'm the first thing that pops up. Let's, let's try, actually, since I'm sitting here. Watch this. Uh, mm. Yep, right there. First thing that pops hey, up. So that's all. That. Uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. can go search it. Check it out. I've got a lot of good. Uh, I, I tried to, to minimize my um, the amount of options because I feel like that might confuse people. So we've got a digital option with all four books. You can split it up. If you've read Crit before, you can get two in digital. Since I've only got two out, I figure nobody's read zero and three. And if you have, you're on the team and you probably get a copy anyway. So you can get two physical and two digital. Or, you know, you can go for the whole big shebang and get all four books here. And you also get a sticker pack with that. So that's kind of cool. Um, and it's very affordable, too. You're getting four books for 20 bucks. 20 bucks. That's five bucks a book. And then I've got a big $65 bundle. You get the mini poster pack. You get a swag bag. You get a T-shirt. You get all the books in digital, physical, and you get both copies of issue three. And I'm throwing in the concept art book as well. So nice. You know, I figured that's a really good bundle for everybody. And it's it still is a good bundle, and it's priced appropriately. It's good. So. And I'm gonna go down here because uh, I got my stretch goals, and something really important that I want to show off is if we do hit 60 backers. My original OG crit book, that's skinny reach, cheap caliber, awesome. and cheap boulder right there. That's my, my OG cover. I'm printing that as is. You, I'll zoom in a little bit on this, this piece of crap that I drew. Uh, <laughs> I, I say that. Hey, we I, all got to start somewhere, I'm, man. I'm proud of it. Uh, my original crit logo was, you know, a, a D is a D12. Uh, Originally, I actually wanted to call the team D12, but they wouldn't let me do it. Um, again, another rap reference. Re uh, regulators in D12, they just wouldn't let me do it. But, um, you know, this was the book that inspired everything. This is also the book. A good portion of this, Jack and Nate are redoing. Um, what I've seen so far from the art, it looks amazing. Mm -hmm. But, yep. you know, this was the original version, and they've we've actually added quite a bit to the new issue zero We've added some really good plot points that were not in this book. And I, I'll just say it, like Nate, Nate's artwork so far has just been blowing me away with what he's been doing with the real issues, the, the official issue zero. If we unlock this with 60 backers, it will be a one-time print. I will never revisit this. Um, it will be shelved. It will never go anywhere because I didn't want to do that anyway, but I really feel like with the way this campaign's been going, this would be a great, 
great place to put this and create a really good collector's edition. Um, now, if we hit 60 backers, you're also getting crossbones, you're getting burlap, and you're getting the four books inside. So if we hit 60 backers, people are getting seven books. Um, wow. which, you know, I'm, I'm really happy to do this and get this out there. And I'm really excited and happy with the uh, success so far. So I want to do, I want to call out Jesse since he's not on here tonight. I want to say thank you for giving me uh, burlap issue one and then uh, JD for, for crossbones issue one uh, for my backers. So we're real close. Uh, five, we got eight more backers and we'll get crossbones unlocked. So, nice. you know, thank you to everybody that's been sharing it and getting it out there. And I think everybody on this chat has really been helping out. I think the, uh, as you can see, the Savage Sandbox has been really uh, coming through for me. So thanks guys. Um, yep. and, and, you know, we have some cool stuff coming. I'll leave that up to Jason to announce, but, um, we got some cool stuff about to hit the, uh, Hit the social media pages. Yeah, we can't we can't talk about it yet though. So it's I was though. saying that only inside. Yeah. Is. Yep. <laughs> uh, I I would like to say though uh, why we've had this episode on we've gained uh, three subscribers so I thank the new subscribers nice. that chose to hang in there with us. Yes, thank um, you. you know, Very uh, a couple yeah. more and we'll hit a hundred and apparently hundreds of uh, some kind of mile marker with YouTube and we get a. Uh, I think we get a custom URL, so that's kind of cool. So we're close to that. So, yeah, I mean, thank you for the new subscribers. And just thank you for everyone that always tunes in and wants to watch us blab on. And uh, But I always get feedback. I always do. And, uh, and that that we're always uh, – it missed the laughs and the uh, ball busting that, um, you know, that information is obtained. Uh, and, and we are in a, in a – I get a lot of positive feedback for that. So people are, you know, people are pulling information from our antics and awesome. shenanigans. So, and well, that's the goal. Talking does well then. <laughs> yeah, that's the goal. I mean, uh -huh. you know, I mean, I know, you know, I mean, I know some of us don't work as hard as others. I know that, but uh, you know, but uh, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I get that, but <laughs> but you know, it it oh, is man. it is what it is. But you know. Uh, I want to. I want to let everybody know Nate didn't just drop off because he hated no, us. his phone. His phone his died. Phone did die. So yeah, uh, but yeah, but uh, yeah. So seriously, thank you guys for everyone for tuning in. Of course, thank all the boys for coming in. Always, it's always a pleasure. Always hanging out with you guys. And uh, you know, man, next time we'll be on here, I have to. We'll set the date, and uh, I guess we'll have a lot more to talk about. So it'll be our tenth episode, which is pretty badass. I say but, on the tenth episode, it's just unleashed. Yeah, oh, let's just do it on scripted. Yeah, shit talking best. Because yeah, because I you know I mean I don't want to. Every time we put something up here, someone wants to you know tell for it and use it for their little YouTube channel. So you know it is what it is. But, but if we put uh, a shit talking one up, all right? Because yeah. you know, what? I think I think in our shit talking though, we do have some really good information for people. Oh yeah, like, absolutely, and that's basically the feedback I get. <laughs> Um, yeah, which I think yep. in the next room. So she said she can't really hear me when I talk on this, so I'm fine. But there you go. I think if we just did, uh, you know, how not to be an asshole episode, I think that would just be it's good. Educational, well, shit. that's an right. Educational. educational, yeah, 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 right. So, that, all right, well, we'll, we'll call it educational <laughs> shit. Is that the name yeah. of the next episode? Yeah, that's my new t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Yeah, seriously though. Uh, th uh, thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you for those that you know like are liking the video right now, and uh, all that we've uh, you know plenty of views, and we always pull tons of views after the fact, which is amazing. And uh, yeah, I I thank you. Thank you for choosing to uh, follow us, and uh, you know hit that bell button so you can always see when we're doing something new. That's always helps too. All right. Well, this is the this is the SSB. Uh, SSB crew right now, so uh, you know, wolf pack for life, right? So, yeah, all right, boys, we're gonna wrap this up. Thanks for coming, and next episode 10. See you guys later. Take care. Bye.